In this video, I'm going to tell you a story. It's a story of plein air watercolour paintings on a pebble beach. It's a story of a black cow who saw some paddle boarders and thought, I'd love to do that one day. It's a story of a belted Galloway cow who made it happen. And it's a story of a sheep who saw the cows doing it and thought, I'll do a bit of that as well. Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, draw some cattle with one of these uni pins. I'm going to use either a light or a mid grey. I'm not quite sure which, but we'll give that a go. So I happen to have some cattle photos on my phone. So I use my phone, a bit difficult in the bright sunlight, I had to adapt to that. But I used the image on my phone to create this quick drawing of a cow kind of lying down. I'm going to put her in the foreground. And then my plan is to just do another quick sketch of some of these kayakers or maybe the paddleboard is off in the distance. So I've added, uh, well, let's go over here first. I've added a paddleboarder and I've added a kayaker here as well. And I've also added the shoreline and a little bit of a drawing of a wave. So the paddleboarder and kayaker were inspired by that little group out there. Uh, hopefully you can see those people. I'll zoom in a bit for you on the video. And then when it comes to the pebbles, what I've done is, so if we look at the pebbles on the beach here, you know, that's got a distinctive shape, for example. That's got a distinctive shape. Um, you know, and then there are others which are perhaps more sort of tr traditional pebble, pebble shape, if you like. Although, of course, there's a, an infinite number of shapes here. But what I've done is I've just, with my line work, I've copied out a couple of distinct shapes, copied from actual pebbles, and then I've just kind of scurried in some very loose lines just to kind of build up that little line of pebbles there to give the animal something to sit on. But now I can get my watercolours out. So I begin by applying just a, a coating of you know, clean water with my big uh, round synthetic mop brush and really you know, very much drenching the paper. And the reason I'm doing that, you can see I'm working with the paper fairly flat here today, just resting the pad on the pebbles. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is when I come in as I'm doing now with my cerulean blue for the sky, uh, I'm just sweeping in very long brush strokes taking care to go all the way from one edge of the painting all the way to the other edge you know because I have a little bit of a tendency I don't know about you but to sort of lift off the brush a little bit too early sometimes so I'm careful to go all the way to the edge I experiment with going from right to left and left to right and what I want to do here and hence the initial coating of, of just the, the clean water is I want to have very much a soft blending of colors for the sky and for the colours in the sea and I want a soft transition uh, between the sky and the sea as well so the horizon will be barely defined in this painting and the idea with this painting and indeed the other two paintings in the series of three I'll show you the full um, full complete three paintings at the end of the video for this little surreal series the whole idea is not to capture the scene exactly as you as you may have gathered from the, the preview at the start of the videos but the idea is to create something almost dreamlike, something that's fun, and there's a bit of humour there as well. So I'm definitely being inspired by the view. Uh, for the sky I use cerulean blue, and then coming in with cobalt blue now for the, for the sea. I've already used a little bit of permanent rose. I may have said that already. And I'm just really being inspired by the colours that are out there, but I'm not getting tangled up in detail or worried about trying to capture the scene exactly. So the idea is there will be this soft, blended, dreamlike first layer of blended colours and the watercolour will work its magic, create a few cauliflowers, create a few blooms, create a few hopefully um, really gentle transitions from one colour to another 
and then when that's dry I can come in and just define little areas a little more precisely. But what I'm doing here as I come towards the foreground of the sea is I am deliberately leaving just little bits of white of the paper showing so that it gives the impression of light scattering off the surface of the water. So working in this way I find the, the best way or the best kind of mindset to get the effects that I want for this type of painting is to in my head get into the, the frame of mind where I'm almost doodling where you're not really thinking about it too much you know you are looking you are thinking about what you want to do but when you put the brush down you don't want to be too organized with your mark making it needs to have an element of randomness and what I've just been adding here as I've been chatting away is a blend of orange and cadmium orange, I think it was, and uh, raw, yes, raw umber. No, burnt sienna, sorry, burnt sienna and cadmium orange. So there is quite a reddish hue to the water down at Budley. And so just wanted to include a little element of that as well. So this painting is actually the first in the series of three. This one's going to be called I would love to do that someday. So the idea is that this black cow, although I'm going to paint it a different colour as you'll see later, this black cow is kind of nestled on the pebbles looking at the paddle borders and the kayakers and thinking, now that looks like fun. But this is actually the last of the three paintings that I created. The first one and the second one, as I say, I'll show you at the end of the video. So when you're trying to create sort of a little narrative within a set of paintings, you know, you don't have to do it in order. You can create a painting and then hopefully, you know, maybe you're inspired by what you end up with. And then that might think, well, hang on, I could put one after this and then one before it. Or I could do three paintings after this in the sequence and two before the one I painted first. You don't have to create it in order. And, you know, you're not making a movie when you create a series of paintings with a theme or a narrative involved. It's much more like a comic strip where you're thinking, well, what are the most important frames in this story? And then you're deliberately leaving missing bits in between those frames for the viewer to kind of fill in with their own imagination. So it's a, it's a really good, fun little thing to do, I think. Um, but I tend not to do it with an overall plan initially. The way I tend to work, not always, but is to do a painting. And then if I'm inspired to do others along that theme, then I'll go ahead and do it. But while I've been chatting away here, you, as you can see, the pad is resting on the pebbles as mentioned, and there are a ton of different coloured pebbles. So I'm just, I've just been tapping in a variety of colours, very loose washes, going to lift off some of that in the foreground with my paper towel, just to create a random array of bright colours for the pebbles. And again, I'll work on top of that once that's all dry. So there we go, time to let that dry and have a bit of lunch. Now we've got some more paddle borders out in the water now and you can see the paddle boards come in a wide range of colour so I'm going to try and mimic something close to that bluey green where those two children are kind of clambering on at the moment. So to do that I've mixed up some phthalo, green, some phthalo blue with uh, pale green. And I'm running that along the lower half of the little drawing of the paddleboard I've done. So perhaps this particular paddleboard has got a, a white top and a, a green underbelly. And again, I'm just mixing that in with some of the browns that I used for the other paddleboard, and just to give a more subdued version of that colour. And then this this one's a little closer, so I'm going to to be a little bit more elaborate with, with the reflection but not go too crazy just a few broken lines there and then again inspired by some of the people who are out on the water at the moment let's grab um, a little bit of This could be permanent rose, I think. So we'll make the shorts fairly bright. And again, just mixing it in with some of the darker color I've got already on my palette. We'll go directly 
So it comes down to there, down to there. And you just pop a little hint of reflection of those shorts in. Back to the yellow ochre now, just like I used earlier. And most of the people on the water here are wearing, you know, life jackets or t-shirts or whatever, but I'm going to assume this guy's a bit more hardy. So we'll just give him their torso and so on. And again, little hint of a reflection for him. Now I may add a little bit of shadow to him, but I think for the moment I'm fairly happy with that simple treatment. Now as the waves break here, there's quite a deep shadow underneath the, the crest of the wave. So I'm just coming in with some uh, ultramarine blue and a little flat brush. begin to suggest that shadow. I don't want to be overly precise about this because you want to capture some of the random nature of the water. But you know this is it's very much a surreal stylized painting so you know having said that I'm not overly concerned about you know, getting it perfect either. And then what we'll do is just dilute or run the, some water through the brush. And while that's still a little damp, I'll just tease out some of the lower edge of that paint I've just applied. Not everywhere, but just in a couple of places. And that same flat brush and that same colour. I can use to put in some uh, ripples and lines in the water. the same over on this side as well. Now for the, uh, the cow, so the, the reference is a, is a black cow, and I would normally start off with um, a pale blue to uh, paint this type of animal. And I'm, but I'm not working from the reference now because I'm actually filming this bit on my phone, which is the same place as the, um, the reference photo is stored. And I had some violet uh, already on my palette from a previous painter. So I thought what I would do, uh, violet being a nice strong colour, is continue with this flat brush and, you know, using my imagination and memory, just begin to uh, put in an initial wash on, uh, on the tab. Now, that said, I could probably do with getting the, uh, the paper a little wetter. Well, as in, have some moisture on it because it was completely dry for the rest of this wash. Because otherwise I'm going to be sort of colouring in, which isn't quite 
what I want to avoid. So we'll, that's more like it. Get things moving a bit then. Go. So we've got an initial wash in place. Let's get a bit more of that violet and um, we'll darken things here down towards the uh, near side of the animal. So we're still working wet and wet. I could probably I think I'll be okay going up over the head. We'll see what happens with the water color. So adding this darker shade, but leaving little areas untouched after that first wash so that um, there's some highlight colours there. Now I've gone a bit dark there up here, so it's a bit of a pain. So because of that I need to grab even more and darken this near side further. putting the same colour on, just more pigment. And then I'm going to let that dry at this stage. Oh, no, I'm not. Got a little, little bit more to do. There we go. So having returned home, I added a few extra lines to give a little bit of texture and just a few little extra details using the same Unipin marker pen that I used right at the beginning, added, added those little extra bits of texture to the cow. So we've got the kayaker off in the distance, we've got the paddle border a bit closer, and then we've got the cow lying down on the pebbles. And the idea, as mentioned earlier, is that this cow is looking out, you know, off at the people having fun on the water and thinking I'd love to do that one day. So that's the first painting in this series. Then the second painting is called The Things You See at the Seaside. So in this one, similar theme, but now we've got a belted Galloway cow actually on the paddleboard. So I thought, you know, belted Galloway cattle, very distinctive, very unusual style, just that single white stripe. So maybe they're the kind of animal which likes to do their own thing, step outside the box a little bit. So I actually painted the scene on a different day, plein air, at Budley Salterton Beach again. But the cow, I just painted completely from memory because over the years I've painted quite a few belted Galloway cattle. So I was able to uh, paint that one from memory. And then the third and final painting depicts a sheep lying down on a paddleboard. Again, the seascape was painted plein air on a different day from the other two, but again at Budley Salterton Beach. Um, the sheep I also painted from memory for, uh, for this one. Again, I've painted a lot of sheep over the years, so uh, I was able to do that bit from memory. And then this one's called There's Nothing Wrong With Following the Trends. So the idea being that, you know, we talk about people following the flock or don't be a sheep, that kind of thing. So I kind of thought, well, maybe the belted Galloway cow is the innovator and a sheep's natural tendency would be to go with the current flow. So that was the that was my thinking there for the title of that one.
Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this little journey into my slightly warped and wonderful imagination, or I hope you found it wonderful anyway. Um, but maybe you have a different story for these three paintings. Either way, I really love painting plein air. I really love working with watercolour and just how watercolour does its own thing. And then I've also really enjoyed adding these farm animals to this really unusual and weird environment. Thanks very much for watching this video. Hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thank <laughs> you.